Hi everybody, welcome. It is that time of year when we send the kids back to school. So today's cake video is an 80s style lunchbox. And since I love the TV show Stranger Things, which takes me back to the 80s, I thought it was the perfect theme for my lunchbox cake. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so first I'm going to prepare my board. Let me take the dowel out to show you. This is just a regular wooden dowel and my board is a piece of MDF that I got from the hardware store. What I'm doing first is adding a dab of hot glue onto the end of my dowel and then pushing it into a hole I drilled into my board. The hole that I drilled doesn't go all the way through the board, it goes almost all the way through. Once I have that into place, I'm hot gluing all around it for more stability. Now this structure is not nearly as sturdy as using a threaded rod, but it definitely works for this smaller type of cake. Alright, next I'm covering my board with some cake foil I got from my local cake decorating shop. You can also use the Wilton brand from the craft store. Once I have it on my board, I'm taping it down just like you would when you wrap a gift. One thing I forgot earlier was to add felt pads to the bottom of the board so that you can get your fingers underneath the board. Next I'm brushing candy melts around the spot where my foil and dowel meet, just in case my foil tears. Moving on to the good part, the cake. For this cake, I baked two 12 inch squares and I cut them right in half down the center and then I toured it each half. So typically, I would also cut off the top to level it, but for this cake, I was worried it wouldn't be tall enough, so I left it on for more height. In the end, I didn't actually need to worry about that, it was plenty tall. Let's get this cake stacked. I start by sliding my cake halves down the wooden dowel and then I fill each layer with my strawberry Swiss meringue. I like piping a border around the outside edge and then filling it with the buttercream so that each filling layer is equal in size. And I continue layering all my cake, just making sure they are all lined up and nice and straight. Once I've layered up four cakes, I need to add some dowels for support. These are plastic straws that I've cut down to the exact height of the cake. You can also use wooden dowels if you like. And then I add a cake board that's just a little bit smaller than my cake. And I continue adding more layers of cake and buttercream frosting. Now that I have it all stacked, I'm smoothing out the buttercream on the sides and then I cover it with some plastic wrap and then I pop it into the refrigerator to chill. Once it's cold, it is so much easier to cut. The knife I'm using here is called a serrated knife or a bread knife, which I find works best for me. I went ahead and cut off some cake from the top and I'm going to save that to snack on later. And next I'm trimming each of the sides just a bit and I'm rounding out the top and bottom edges on each side. Now that I have my lunchbox shape, I'm covering it completely in vanilla Swiss meringue buttercream. Basically, I just cover it lightly in buttercream and then I pop it into the refrigerator to chill and then I add another coat of buttercream. Using a flexible plastic smoother, I smooth that out. And if you want to make it even more smooth, you can use a hot spatula. To make the edges nice and sharp, I'm scraping my offset spatula right along that top edge and I push the buttercream in towards the middle. All right, let's move on to the fondant. For the sides, I'm using pre-colored red fondant made by Satin Ice and I'm rolling it out with my Wilton rolling pin. I roll the fondant up onto my rolling pin and then I unroll it onto the sides of the cake. Using an X-Acto knife, I cut away the extra fondant right along that edge. For both the front and the back of my cake, I'm using white fondant, and I do the best that I can to roll it into a squarish type of shape, and then I place that onto my cake. Using my hands, I pull the fondant around the sides and the top edge to make it look like the lid of the lunchbox. To make a straight cut along this top edge, I've cut out a strip of paper to use as a guide. First I mark where I want to cut it, and then I cut completely through the white fondant with my X-Acto knife. You just have to be careful not to cut through the red fondant too. Using my pastry wheel, I'm cutting away the excess. And also, I'm using my sugar shaper to push the fondant under the cake, and then I get the fondant smooth out with my fondant smoothers. Next, I cut out a square piece of paper, and I stuck it to my cake with shortening. I used this as a guide to add a trim of red fondant. I removed the paper, and then I added an orange trim, and then also a yellow trim too. I thought this looked pretty cute. I also added another thin log of gray fondant right along the top edge to match the 80s style lunchbox. Okay, these are the metal pieces of the lunchbox that were all made by hand out of fondant with Tyler's powder mixed into it. 
After I got these made, then I attached these onto my cake with some edible glue. To decorate the sides of my cake, I created these cute stars and dots using two sizes of star cutters and a tip tin for the dots. And I stick those onto my cake. Next I'm using edible silver paint to paint all those metal looking parts on my lunchbox. Moving on to my handle. The handle is made from fondant with Tylos powder mixed into it. It's pretty easy to make. Just roll out the fondant and cut it. I'm using my six wheel pastry cutter and then I attach it to my cake with some edible glue. And I hold it into place with a paper towel roll while it dries. Alright, next up I'm cutting out the Stranger Things logo. To do this I'm using modeling chocolate and a printout of the logo. I'm using a pointed modeling tool to trace the letters onto the chocolate. When I lift up the logo, voila, you can now see the letters transferred onto the chocolate. Then using an X-Acto knife, I cut out all the letters. We all know how much Eleven loves Eggos, so adding these are a definite must. I'm making these out of modeling chocolate. I'm using a circle cutter to cut out two circles, and then I add lines of modeling chocolate to mimic the design on the Eggos. Now, if you want to use real Eggos, then definitely do it. That would have actually been so much easier. Once I have the design on the Eggos, I completely cover them in fondant, and I use a sugar shaper to help define each little square on the Eggos. I'm then dusting inside each square with brown food color dust, and then I'm dusting all over the top to make it look toasted. I love the saying, friends don't lie in this show, so I wanted to add it to the back of my cake. I'm using the same technique as before by rolling out my modeling chocolate, tracing the letters, and then cutting them out. One more decoration to cut out. This is a Dungeons and Dragons die with an 11 on the front. I'm tracing the pattern onto my fondant, cutting it out, and painting the lines and numbers with food coloring dust mixed with a drop of vodka. All right, let's put this all together. To move my logo onto my cake, I brush it with shortening. I broke the E during this, but it's okay, I can fix that later. Once I have little bits of shortening on each letter, I press a piece of wax paper onto it and it should stick. See how I can lift it up now? If any of the letters fall off or are crooked, it's okay, just take a moment to get them all lined back up. Next I'm brushing each letter with edible glue, and then I pick up the wax paper and I press it onto my cake just like so. And then I gently pull off the wax paper. I get my E back into place and I straighten out any crooked letters. Here I'm sticking my die on the front of the cake with shortening, and then I begin adding my Christmas lights. To make the lights, I start by adding black strands of fondant in a random way. I didn't want it to be too perfect looking. This is when I decided to put the Eggos on the front instead of the die, so I gently pull off the die and I put it aside. I then use a piping tip to cut out teeth marks into my Eggo. I thought that looked pretty cute. And then I attached it with candy melts. I also cut my other Eggo in half and I added it to the top to look like it was sticking out. To finish my lights, I'm using a skewer to make dots of melted candy melts where I'd like the lights to go. And then I stick on the colorful sprinkles for lights. Almost finished with this cake. I'm sticking my die onto the back of the cake right in the middle and I then add my letters one at a time. I'm sticking these on with shortening because I know I'll have to move them to get them centered. All finished. It turned out so cute. Let's cut into it. Thank you all for watching. If you have any ideas for me, please let me know down in the comment section. And if you are also on social media, please go check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. See you all next time. Bye.